the praise that he is due. Put your hands together this morning. Let's raise the praise in the house. Let's raise the temperature at home. Let's put our hands together and bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. How many know that God is a God that cannot break his promises? He promised never to leave us nor forsake us. So we sing it out this morning. Celebrate with us. Hallelujah. I am not forgotten. 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 God knows my name. Hallelujah. Put your hands on it. Come on, let's bless him this morning. I am not forgotten. I am not forgotten. He knows. God knows my name. Sing it, I'll say. I am not forgotten. I am not forgotten. I am not forgotten. I am not forgotten. God knows. God knows my name. He knows my name. Woo! Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together with us this morning. Say, He knows my name. He knows my name. weakness joy over sadness he knows my name he knows my name he's father to the fatherless strength to friendless hope to the homeless he knows my name he knows my name oh i will praise you i will praise you i, will praise you. I, will praise you. I am fearfully i am fearfully and wonderfully made sing it i'll say your name this morning say it he knows my name Strange joy over sadness he knows my name he knows my name he's the father father to the fatherless he's a friend friend to the friendless he's the hope, hope to the hopeless he knows your name he knows my name Yo, oh, I, will praise, I will praise you yes I will I will praise I you am fearfully. I am fearfully Everybody say, I am not forgotten. I am not forgotten. I am not forgotten. You are not forgotten. I am not forgotten. God knows. God knows my name. They say, I am not forgotten. I am not forgotten. I am not forgotten. I am not forgotten. God knows. God knows my name. He knows your name. Come on, put your praise on that right there this morning. Let's celebrate that. He hasn't forgotten you. He knows exactly what you need. Say, he knows my he name. He knows my name. Hallelujah. Listen, God knows the very number of hairs on your head. He knew you before you were formed in your mother's womb. So we celebrate that this morning and we want to sing out and say, I am not forgotten, never forsaken. I am not forgotten, never forsaken. Help me see, I am. I am not I'm not forgotten.
Yes, I will. Anybody believe in that? Anybody believe in that? Will you choose to praise? Yeah. Yeah. For all my days. Oh, yeah. Come on, I chill. I choose to pray to glorify, glorify the name of the And nothing can stand against it. I choose to pray to glorify, glorify the name of the to God. Give him glory right there. Give him glory right there. Come on, how many believe that Jesus is a great name this morning? If you believe his name is great, come on and worship with us this morning.
worthy is the Lamb that was slain for us. Son of God and man, you are high, and all the world will praise your great name. You are high, and all the world will praise your great name. Yeah, we sing, Jesus, Jesus, worthy is the Lamb that was slain, Son of God, and because you are high, you are high. And all the world will, the world will your great name. Now listen. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. Jesus. To break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Say, break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Say, there is power in the name of Jesus. There is power. There's an army rising up. If you believe it, say it with me. There's an army rising up. There's an army, There's an army yeah, rising up to break every chain, break every chain, break every chain, to break every chain, break every chain. Cause I hear the chains falling And I hear the chains falling Yes, I do, I hear the chains I hear the chains falling So break every chain, break every chain Come on and lift your hands, hallelujah. Come on and magnify his name this morning. We're going to magnify his name this morning. Jesus, worthy is the lamb that was slain. Son of God in You are high and lift in all the world with your great name and all the world the world will praise your great name and all the world will world will praise your great name now if you believe that this morning come and magnify his name with us this morning if you believe that this morning come and worship his name this morning we magnify your name this morning hallelujah Come on, and all the world, and all the world will praise your great name. Come on, lift your hands. Hallelujah, hallelujah. 
Hallelujah, glory to God, hallelujah, and all the world will praise your great name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Sister Button, I need you to get a flag and just wave it across the front, and all the world will praise your great name. Glory to God. Jesus, your name, hallelujah, is a banner over us this morning. Hallelujah, glory to God. Jehovah Nisi is his name. The Lord, our banner, the Lord, our victory. Hallelujah, Jesus, hallelujah, your name is lifted high. Hallelujah, glory to God, and all the earth will praise your great name. Hallelujah, come on, lift your hands and lift him, lift him, lift him. Come on, as you open your mouth, your worship lifts him. Glory to God, if you open up your mouth and worship. Hallelujah, glory to your name. Hallelujah, come on, just open your mouth and love on the Lord. Come on and press in this morning. Come on and press in this morning. Hallelujah. Come on, darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness shall cover. But upon you my light will shine. Arise and shine for thy light has come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon me. Somebody say the glory. Hallelujah. The glory of the Lord is risen upon me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, glory to God, hallelujah. Come on, lift that glory to God. Hallelujah, glory to your name. Hallelujah, glory to God, hallelujah. We lift your name up, we lift your name up, we lift your name up. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, come on, just lift your hands. Father, your name is a strong tower, and the righteous run in and they are safe. We lift your name up. Come on, lift your hands and say, we lift your name up. Hallelujah. My heart will sing no other name but Jesus. My heart will sing no other name. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We lift you up, Father. We lift you. Come on and magnify him. Hallelujah. Come on, say the sick are healed and the dead are raised at the sound of your name. Somebody just cry, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Come on, Jesus, 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 Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Somebody ought to come in from the outside and come on in where the table is spread. Hallelujah. Come on, clap those hands for the Lord. Hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. 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 Somebody say he's worthy. He's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Shalonda, will you give us a welcome this morning, Sister Shalonda? Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You can be seated in the presence of the Lord. Thank you, Lord. feel the presence of the Lord today. Oh yes, his presence is strong in the house. We want to welcome you this morning, Hosanna Family Church. Oh, we want to welcome you this morning. There's a word in the house. We want to welcome online. We want to welcome you this morning. God has a word for you. God has a word to get you through the day. God has a word to get you all through the week. God has a word to get you through the month. Oh, open your ears so that you may hear. Oh, what the Lord is saying today. And we just thank you. We thank you that we're alive to see today. We thank you, God, that we're alive to hear your word that you have given to the man of God today. And we just give you honor. So we welcome you online. We welcome you here at Hosanna Family Church. Thank you for worshiping with us today. Think it not be strange that you tuned in today to hear the word of God. And we pray that it be a blessing to you through the day, through the week, through the month. In Jesus' name, we welcome you. Hallelujah. God is good. Hallelujah. God is good. God is good. Look at somebody say, welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome to my Father's house. Bless the Lord. Welcome. How many glad to be in His presence? Hallelujah. It's not just a name. It's your great name. 
It's not just a name. You know, you can't downplay Jesus. It's the name that is above every name. It's the name that is above every name. At the name of Jesus, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess. I know it's October 31st, but it's still Jesus. I said, I know it's October 31st, but it's still Jesus. Hallelujah. My heart will sing. No other name. Jesus. Jesus. My heart will sing. My heart will sing. No other name. Jesus, come on. Oh, you right there. Jesus. testimony bless the Lord this week bless the Lord yes. but why don't you tell I believe it's such a time that we need the good news of the gospel Woo. God takes care of his children yes he's not a yes, bad he God does. he's a good father he's a good good father he's good all the time he'll take you through and bring you out what has the Lord done in your life what hasn't he done in my life <laughs> so I've been laid off as y'all know I gave a testimony for 19 months 19 months but I have not lacked not one thing I lack more working than I did not working. So all I can say is God has been mm -mm good to me. I said I wasn't going to work, but that's not what God said for me to do. So I applied for this job three times with the same resume and was told I wasn't qualified for the position. Wait a minute. The same job. The same job. With the same, same resume. Same company. Same, company. same position. I, three times I had to look back at my email and say, but they called me. And I was like, okay, well, <laughs> I'll do the interview. I did my interview, and it wasn't even a day. It was hours. And they said, 
you got the job. And I said, thank you, Jesus. I danced all over my sister's house. And she, she, was, she had surgery, and she was like, sissy. She said, you did so good. And I said, all I could do, I was running around the house. That's all I could say because I didn't even ask the money or nothing. But then she texted me what the money was. Woo, I got a text with the money. And I said, my God, my, my God. God. My That's God. all I can say. My God. my God. That's all I can say. And what's so funny is, is my benefits from my old job ended today. But my benefits for the new job start tomorrow. <laughs> about faith, faith, patience, tithing, and praying. And all of those go hand in hand for me because I wasn't one to be patient. But And I said, I got faith, I got faith. But I told my mom last week, I said, I got nothing else to stand on but faith. That's all I got to stand on. So all I can say, and there's some other things, but that right there for me was, was big. I don't even text you, Bishop, but I had to text you and tell you that. <laughs> so I just I just want to say for anyone. And last Sunday you put a seed on it. I put a seed on it. And I got seed in the ground, so I said, Lord, I'm ready to reap my harvest. And I did put a seed, on, did it. Put a seed on it. And I asked you to pray about sure it. Did. And in my mind, I was like, man, I didn't apply for this job three times. They're not going to give me this job. But I, after that service, after your preaching, I had patience and faith that if this is what God has for me, this is going to be for me. Woo! And so it was for me because I got the call and I said, you got the job. She said, I don't know what you did. I said, it wasn't me. <laughs> It wasn't me. It wasn't me. It was him. And I knew that. She didn't know that, but it was God. God had that for me. Why I didn't get it three times ago? Because it wasn't what God had for me at that time. But with the same resume. With the same resume, the same job. I kept saying, I don't know. I said, what they calling me for? They said I wasn't qualified. So I just want to say that if anybody is 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 praying because I did have a heavy heart sometimes I was human Come on. and I and and you gave that word that said that God never leaves you but he can take a break on you and I didn't need God taking a break on me and I did think that but I had to start praying and really being intentional with my prayers and so when you become intentional and you become one that is something because God does manifest what he says he's gonna do so I could go on and on and on and on, but I just want to say, whatever you're going through, you stay encouraged. Yes. You stay prayerful. Yes. You be patient. You keep the faith, and you better keep paying your tithe. Because I'm telling you, in 19 months, 19 months, I have not lacked anything. Nothing. Nothing. So I want to let you know that just keep staying encouraged and remain faithful. Somebody ought to give God praise. Yeah. Anybody else got a praise report you want to share? Sister Luana, come on, Mel, come on up here. Jada, come on, sir. Hold on, stop, stop, stop. Hold on. A gentleman gonna help you. I gotta tell it, I gotta tell it, I gotta what tell it, it I gotta tell it. Let me tell you something. I remember the last time I worked for Corporate America. Actually, I got fired from that job. Okay. Sometimes when you stay in something too long, God will have to snatch you out come of on. it, right? <laughs> It was that, that day that I decided, and I stood on this pool pit, and we were doing first fruit seed, and I put a, a seed on my business. I started it, right? Six years ago. Six years ago, I kept trucking. The first year, I didn't see anything. The second year, I didn't see anything. Things started to come up slowly, and I said, well, I see a cloud. As long as I see a cloud, I'm going to keep on praying, and I'm going to keep in every first fruit seed since then. I had planted it, and I said, God, I believe you no matter what it looks like, but I never went without a thing. Six years ago, six years ago, everything was always taken care of. I never saw lack, sister. I testify <laughs> with you. Hallelujah. Oh, my God. Within two weeks, two weeks, saints. Two weeks. Doors just started flying open flinging open. I got so much business now I got to go hire people to do it. Hallelujah. 
Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> Woo! Glory! Praise him, praise him. Praise him praise oh, he's praise faithful him. like that. <laughs> that, that. That word that you preach, you know, I always knew to keep praying. I knew to keep sowing. But when I prayed, I thought you get to a point where you pray for it and you just start thanking them, right? I didn't really think. Now you got to keep going. You got to keep because that's the thing. The prayer is the thing that connects you back when you start to get discouraged. Come on here. That Come word on. blessed me. <laughs> it changed me. To God be the glory, saints. God is faithful. Woo. Hallelujah. Isn't Thank that a you, good Jesus. thing? Got so much business. I got to get some help. Somebody yeah. ought to give God praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody ought to give God praise. Glory to God. Come on, Jaden. Come on. Hot mic. Okay, pass it. Hold on. She's going to be. Go first. Come on. What has the Lord done for you? Bishop. Hmm. Well, I know that's a loaded question. But. Man, God, God blew my mind. That's what he did. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Because this morning, that's what we're doing up in here. Praising the Lord. I, um, I ended up getting a job uh, where I was uh, working, doing massages massaging ladies and and uh, not only that but having a chance to minister to the ladies which was a blessing to me but I knew that God wanted me to go to school concerning it not just not just do it but also have a working knowledge behind it and so we had been praying about it and looking into it looking into it and it was always out of state in Florida different places and I'm like okay God now wait a minute Okay, let me try to get there. And then I couldn't because the days that it was offering weren't, weren't lining up with what I needed. So we were praying about it, and we were out to eat. My sister, Sister Demetha, uh, Sister Shalanda, myself, we were out eating. And Sister Demetha said, I found something. Okay, so we like, all right, then she found something for Houston. So it was supposed to be on the 30th, the 30th which would have been a Saturday, which was fine for my job. Ended up maybe four days before we were supposed to take the class, the lady changed the date. So the date went to the 29th. I'm like, God, now you know how I am with my job. I don't play with missing days. So, oh my God, what am I going to do? But at the same time, I had a dilemma. It was either God or man. Okay. You put it like that. Okay. 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 It was either God okay. or man. Okay. And I say, now God... Me, knowing Luana, I don't like missing work. That's not me. But because you said, then I have to make a decision. So I made the decision, uh, got the day off, had to take the day off. Ended up going to the class, got in the class, and and this lady was so, so, uh, no, so welcome. Okay. Thank you, sister. And so the thing is, in the process of me being in the class, introducing myself, the lady kept saying, I didn't know it. She said, oh, Miss Luana, I just love you. She said, it's just something about you. You're so nurturing. I'm like, Lord, I'm trying to take you. Okay, wait. Okay. And I'm like, okay, thank you. But the whole class, I'm like, okay, you keep talking about me. And we got this whole class here. I'm like, God, okay. Didn't know, Bishop. Went through it, went through the class, had a beautiful time learning hands-on what we needed to do. I passed the class. Honey, I say, glory, hallelujah. Not only did I pass the class. What else? Bishop, we took a picture. Okay, she, but the teacher took a picture of all the students. And we were happy, but I'm like, wait a minute, y'all, hold on. We got to take a picture with the instructor. She taught us, let's take a picture. They start leaving out so fast. I mean, everybody was getting out. I'm looking like, wait a minute, are y'all not grateful? What's going on? It was only one young lady that was left behind besides the instructor. And she said, God told me to take this class. I said, baby, we got the same testimony. She told her testimony, and then I told her mine. And the lady was saying, the, the instructor said, Miss Luana, she said, we have a group. She said, you think you might want to pray with us? I said, yeah, <laughs> no problem. Bishop, it ended up where she said, you want to pray now? I'm like, okay, God, all right. Opportunity, 
time and chance. And I'm like, okay. So the, it ended up where I had the chance after I passed the class to pray with the instructor, to pray with the young lady. When we got finished, she said, how did you know? Wait a minute. How were you praying what you were praying? How did you know to pray what you were praying? I said, you asked me to pray whatever God wanted concerning you. I said, it wasn't me. It was God. I said, he knows the heart of man, not me. And so I just want to thank God. When you choose to follow what God is telling you to do. There you go. When you choose to be obedient, because in this hour, the last of 2021, I done already put a, uh, uh, put a seed on it. I done put a prayer on it. Okay. I done put decision on it. Okay. Uh, I don't know what I haven't put on. Okay. And I done told God, I said, let me tell you. I, I was in the car one night. I said, God, wait a minute now. You my father. Yeah. I said, some things I've been waiting on 20 years. And because you said it, I'm still waiting. Come on here. I'm still Let's waiting. Pull it back in, yeah. I told him, I said, now my children fixing to walk heavy in the anointing that you allowed to be upon them because I know who they are. I'm starting to see changes. Ha, they oh. haven't manifested yet yeah. here. Yeah. Ah, need I say. But I'm seeing changes. <laughs> so God is able yes, to is. do exceedingly, abundantly, abundantly yes. above all you could ever ask or think. I'm telling you this. If he did it for me, and I see him doing it for you, Come on. surely he can do it Come by on. our own line, family. <laughs> ha. They're going to send in testimonies just like we are. I thank God that he's the God of our life, that he's head over our life, that he's the love of our life. He's the lover of our soul. Ha, then I say, I love him. I love him. I love him. Because he first loved us. God bless you. Pass that mic right there. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise Let the Lord. What the Lord doing for you? God is so good. Let me tell y'all what God has done for me. I ended up going in the hospital back in June. And uh, it, was, it was a 911. I had to go. I was only there for 24 hours. They done everything possible, didn't know what was going on. About two months later, I got a bill in the mail. The bill was $89,900. And I say, my God, Eric, what did they do to me for $89,900? 24 hours. So for 24 hours, they just gave me a bed and I left out. So I say, God, this is, uh, this is unheard of. So I told God, I say, I, I won't pay it, Lord. <laughs> I say, this, I, don't, I don't receive this bill. You know, I put the anointing on that thing. I done saw some stuff. I done had a baby at 189000 So I say, well, I say, God, I don't receive this bill. I did not receive it in my spirit. I did not receive it to come out of my bank account. <laughs> And so I called the I called the doctor the the little number on the uh, hospital, and on the bottom it said if you need assistance. I said, "Well, I got insurance. I need assistance, though." <laughs> and I thought about you, Elder Hillard, because it's the same hospital that you were in. And I say, "God, you gave Elder Hillard a miracle." Oh, Baba, shut it up, Baba. I said, "You gave her a miracle." I said, I need one yeah. in the same hospital. You can do it. <laughs> and when I called, she said, well, fill out this information and call us back. I had been dodging the mail, you guys. See, when you put something, I didn't even want to see the bill no more because I rejected the $89,900. I rejected it. I didn't want to see it attached to my name. I did not open the envelopes. About three months later, three months ago, Holy Spirit say, open up the letter. I have not given you the spirit of fear. Yeah. I said, well, God, I just didn't want to see it. <laughs> I opened it up, and it said it's been canceled. I called, because you know when that thing hits your spirit, don't ask God for nothing and put faith on it and then get scared. Because I got a little nervous after it was paid in full. When I called, I said, ma'am. I said, I need you to look up my account. She said, you can't, I can't find it under your social. I said, well, I got a letter from you guys. I just need to confirm before I get too happy. <laughs> I, need to get, I need to get some confirmation. She said, give me your, uh, your number. I gave her the number. She said, okay. I said, could you tell me the total? She said, well, it's been paid. I said, just tell me the total of the amount paid. She said, my God, what did you have done? She was even shocked. She said, this is a big bill. She said, well, do you have a pen? I said, yes, ma'am. She said, we canceled a debt for $89,900. 
I was in the salon doing hair. I told my client, excuse me a I minute. Know Excuse me a minute. In the middle of sewing her hair in, your needle and thread gonna have to wait. I gotta praise God right I know that's here. Right. And she say, I don't know what you praising God for, but I'ma praise him with you. Come on and praise him with me. Eighty-nine thousand nine hundred dollars. Don't receive it. One more testimony, one more. Bless the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. Coming, Bishop. What you say? <laughs> One of the things that I forgot to tell y'all, remember I told y'all I got the new job? I left out the best part of the testimony. My exit bonus was six months of pay. <laughs> a what? A what? Okay. It was six months of pay. <laughs> and so, huh, the exit bonus. The exit bonus. They tried to offer me another 20000 to stay a little bit longer, okay. but the deal I had was too good. I okay. couldn't pass the, it up. I had options, so I thank God for options. And so I was discussing with HR, you know, my paperwork and my exit. I'm like, okay, this, wait a minute, these numbers ain't what they, uh-uh, because with the Dewey Decimal System, and that, we, short a, we short a zero. <laughs> We short a zero. <laughs> so I was like, uh, ma'am, what is this amount? Because this ain't, oh, you had extra money we needed to give you. So I'm going to be getting checks from my other job for at least another month. Another month, <laughs> y'all. And I forgot my ties this morning. However, I'm still zealous. Okay, right. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, uh-uh, we got to get this out. But yeah. Father takes real good care of 
his children. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Come on, clap your hands for the Lord. tell nobody. Couldn't keep it to myself. What the Lord has done for me. That thing, this testimony that stirred me up. Glory, glory, glory. Glory. Woo. Woo. You don't know what people working on. Glory to God. You don't know what people working on. Glory to you. Come on, let's receive Sister Demita at this time. Bless the Lord. Woo! My, my, my.
Hallelujah. That's my portion. That's my portion. Glory to God. How many know that's your portion? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Grace and mercy, healing, deliverance, breakthrough. That's my portion. Bless the Lord on my soul and forget not his benefits. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, clap hands again. Amen. Right on time. Good news is on the way. Somebody say good news is here. Glory to God. That's my portion. Amen. Hallelujah. Don't you love what God is doing all around you? Aren't you glad you in good company? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. In real good company. Thank you, Jesus. God is doing great things. Somebody shout great things. Hallelujah. That's my portion. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I know the, the, the testimonies are sure. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Sure thing. Amen. God is moving. Amen. Hallelujah. And he is. Amen. Hallelujah. And we're enduring. Praise the Lord. How many are ready for the word this morning? <laughs> Heaven and earth will fade away, but his word will stand forever. Praise the Lord. His word will stand forever. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. First Kings 19 chapter, verse 8 through 13. First Kings 19 chapter, <clears throat> verse 8 through 13. And then I read First Chronicles 12. Verse 22, 1 Chronicles 12, verse 22. Have it, say, have it. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. He's doing great things. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> and he arose ate and drank and went in the strength of that meat 40 days and 40 nights unto Oreb, the mount of God. And he came thither unto a cave and lodged there and behold the word of the Lord came to him and said unto him, what dost thou hear Elijah? And he said, I've been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts for the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, thrown down thine altars and slain thy prophets with the sword. And I, even I only am left, and they seek to take my life, to take it away. And he said, go forth and stand on the mount before God, and behold, the Lord passed by. And a great strong wind rent the mountains and broke it, uh, and broke in pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord wasn't in the fire. And after the fire, a still small voice. And it was so when Elijah heard it that he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood in the entrance of the cave. And behold, there came a voice unto him and said, What dost thou hear, Elijah? Bless the Lord. Give me 1 Chronicles 12 and 22. 1 Chronicles 12 and 22. For at that time, day by day, they came to David to help him until it was a great host like the host of God. I want to talk from the next few moments from the thought, hallelujah, understand the secret. Somebody say, understand the secret. Say it again, understand the secret. Father, we thank you for your grace. Thank you for your glory. Thank you, Lord. The entrance of your word bringeth light, brings understanding, bring illumination. Father, give us your word. Thank you, Lord, that we have an ear to hear what you are saying to the church. And thank you that we are the better. We are the richer. We'll be the stronger after hearing this word today. Thank you for revelation. Thank you that this word falls on good ground and accomplished where you've sent it. Hallelujah. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Somebody say, understand the secret. Two, two counts of scripture this morning, uh, one talking about Elijah who was in a cave and then David who was also in, uh, in a cave. And, and the scriptures, amen, bless the Lord, uh, when it talked about David, bless the Lord, that a great host kept coming, amen, aiding him uh, day by day, bless the Lord. The scripture began to tell us, amen, that th those, when you study that whole chapter, who came to aid David? The, the children of Judah had 6,800 bare shields and spears and were ready and armed for war. The children of Simeon, 7,100 uh, mighty men of valor for war. The children of Levi, 4,600. Uh, and Jodiah was the leader under the 
Aaronites were 3,700s, and Zodok, a young man, a mighty man of valor. And of his house, there were 22 captains. And then Benjamin army had 3,000, and Ephraim had 20. 2,800 mighty men of valor, famous through their faces, uh, through their fathers, famous through their fathers. And then half of the tribe of Manasseh was 18,000. Okay. Amen. Bless the Lord. Now listen to this because I'm going to mention something that doesn't sound very important, praise God, and doesn't even sound like it should be here. Hallelujah. And the scriptures begin to tell us about all those who came and, and, and joined uh, David's army. Is that all right? But then it begins to talk about a group of people, praise the Lord, hallelujah, who were not the most skilled soldiers. They aren't mentioned because they have been trained. They haven't been trained in how to throw a spear or how to use a sword. But they had one skill. That the, the, the only one skill, but that skill made them indispensable to David's army. And that skill that made them indispensable was their ability to discern the times. Give me 1 Chronicles 12 and 32. 1 Chronicles 12 and 32. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. And of the children of Ishakar who were men that had understanding of the times to know what Israel ought to do, the heads of them that were 200 and all their brethren, bless the Lord, that were at their command. Is that all right? They understood the times and knew what to do. Is that all right? See, one of the most important things for a minister is the ability to discern the times. Because everything about life deals with timing. Is that all right? David had many courageous men and soldiers in his army. Many were highly skilled. They were skilled in different areas of warfare. But then he had the sons of Ishakar. Is that all right? They were not skilled warriors, but their weapons was they understood seasons. Oh, my God. That was their skill. That, that's what made them necessary because they had such an understanding of the times that they knew exactly what to do at the right time. And beloved, that's one of the most important things in your life and mine is knowing the season you're in and knowing what to do in that season. It's knowing how to work well within those parameters, work well within that season, not trying to overrun your season, outdo your season, go after stuff that's not your season to have it. Is that all right? Bless the Lord. You have to know your place and know and know what God is doing. Is that all right? And that's what you have to learn. Amen. But you have to learn how to discern, bless the Lord, in season. I believe you, you need to learn amen, and ask the Lord to teach you, bless the Lord, how to even pray in season. Yes. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. You, you got to know how to shift even in season. You know, you know, God is moving all around us. Bless the Lord. I believe my cousin Arlene is here. Her and her husband relocated here from Virginia. Okay. Bless the Lord. I believe they sense the season for them to shift. Yeah. And from Virginia, bless the Lord, going back and forth. Long story short, God opened up incredible doors for employment wow. for not only her and her husband. Come on here, already established, already house set up. Every, but you see, when you learn how to move into your season, God will open doors in that parameter in what you move in. Yes, because when you understand the season, God will open a door for provision. Can I teach this? Our survival is determined today by our ability to discern the times we in. Is that all right? We're in that season right now. Is that all right? Bless the Lord. We want to see what's the new thing or what's the hype or what's this or what's the latest weapon or what's the latest, what, what is this? Bless the, but you got to learn how to discern where you are and discern who's around you. Is that all right? Because you can have all these weapons. You, you can be skilled as I don't know what. Bless the, but if you can't discern when to go to war, you'll be sleeping when you need to be fighting with your skilled self. Is that all right? And don't be such in a rush for the new. I got to see the new thing. I got to do the latest thing. Don't be in such a rush for the new that you underestimate what you already have. Yeah. See, because just because something is old doesn't mean it's not valuable. Yeah. 
alone. I can't get nobody in here. And you got to learn how to pray in season. Is that all right? You got to learn how to decree it in season. But Monique testified about her job. Bless the Lord. But she put a seed last Sunday. I think it was last Sunday. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. On this job. Come on here. Bless the Lord. One, one another spirit of my daughters. Bless the Lord. So Bishop, I put an application on this job, but I want, I want it if it's God's will. So you don't get all over the place in your expectation. You say, God, this is what I'm going for, but I only want it if it's time for it to manifest. Is that all right? Because I want the will of God and I want the timing of God. Because anything you decide to do under God's direction is possible. Amen. You have to discern when to war for something. Bless the Lord. You have to understand when to war for something, and then you have to discern if it's just not time. Uh, the Bible says there's a great effectual door open, but around that open door are many adversaries. Is that all right? Many people respond uh, spontaneously to the pressure around them, and many times their response is completely wrong because they're reaching out of their feelings and out of their human emotions and out of their human logic, and that's why the sons of Ishakar was so important. They were David's secret weapon. Because they had a spiritual discernment that came from God. That's my first point, learn to discern. Why don't you type that, learn to discern. The discernment enabled them to see beyond the natural. See beyond the scenes. Is that all right? This supernatural ability gave them the advantage over the enemy because they weren't controlled or dominated by what they saw in the natural. Now, because they had this supernatural ability to know the times and what actions to take based on that knowledge, they often look foolish to those around them. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. See, discernment sometimes I have you, you know, folk thinking that you foolish. Is that all right? Or thinking that you off or thinking that you out of beat. Bless the Lord. But that's what faith does. Many times when you're acting in faith, it will look foolish to those around you. Your words will sound out of place. They'll be talking about fear, worry, and anxiety, shortages, lockdowns, restrictions, and you talking about revival, miracles, signs, and wonders. Glory to God. They talking about shutting down and you talking about ramping up. They talking about toning it down and you talking about turning it up. They talking about darkness and gross darkness. Hallelujah. And you talking about shining in the light of this glory. They talking about hiding in fear. And you talking about standing up and speaking out without fear. And many times those with the gift of discernment speak and they sound like they're in a total different environment than you're in. Because they are. They're seeing and they're speaking from a different realm. Is that all right? And you need people around you. Bless the Lord. You need it for yourself, and then you need some discerning people around you. Some folk that'll start warning folks to get into position. You need some Deborahs around you. Some Deborahs that will judge a matter. Deborah was a judge, but she was the woman of God. She was Labadoth's wife. Is that all right? Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. And she was so vital. Even though she didn't go to war, she knew how to judge a matter. I can't get nobody. And Barak told her, hallelujah, if you don't go, I'm not going. Is that all right? In other words, I need somebody that can discern to go with me. I know I got this big army, but if we can't discern the right time to do a thing, I can't get nobody in here. Hallelujah. And, and when they came up in time for war, come on, you know the story. Deborah sensed it was time, and Deborah said, up! Yeah. UP, up! This is the day the Lord has given the battle into your hand. And Barak got all the men, and they went to war, and they won the victory. But it was because they had somebody in the camp with an Ishakar anointing. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Woo! And you got to know the seasons of your life, how to place the right people. I don't need you going in the field. You can just sit right here. 
Hallelujah. You can just say something. You can just intercede. Is that all right? You can just sit there and discern. See, when David got old enough for battle, even though David was a warrior man, when he got older, they said, no, we don't need you going to battle no more. Lest the light of Israel go out. You stay back here. I'm a real rancho. And that don't take nothing from your warriorness because I know that you're a warrior. But in this season of my life, lest the light of Israel go out. Look at somebody and say, you better discern your season. That's the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Sometimes you got to say, listen, I didn't been there and done that. Bless the Lord. And can do it again if the Lord say the same. But, but in this season of my life, I'm doing something. This is a car. They, 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 they're seeing from the prophetic. And the prophetic sees where you're going. And the prophetic very often speaks as though we're already there. The prophetic will prepare you. Somebody said we'll prepare you. See, and we're doing all this preparation. You better know what God is saying. Is that all right? Don't just hear, but also prepare. Don't pray for the rain, then forget your raincoat. <laughs> God saying all this. God doing all this. God, is he really? I don't, I don't see you getting him preparation. I, I don't see you getting in getting in gear. I don't see you shifting, but you got all these words around you. Is that all right? That's how the prophetic work. It looks like it looks into a valley of shattered, scattered, dry bones and then it calls them a living breathing army like it did in Ezekiel 37. It looks at empty pots and sees an oil business like the widow woman. It looks at two fish and five loaves of bread and see it as a banquet to feed over five it looks at empty nets and then sees a boat sinking catch. It looks at a cloudless sky and then see a rainstorm. I can't get, I can't get nobody in it, but you got your dessert. I said all that to say that many times the Lord moves, and I'm talking prophetic this morning. Many times the Lord moves in ways that seem illogical. That means they don't make sense to your natural mind. And many times God will call upon his children to speak or act in a way that goes counter. That's a cross ray between the conventional wisdom of that day. And I want to say something that may sound crazy, but this is what the Holy Ghost showed me in the text. You said, Bishop, where are you at? You were talking about Elijah. I'm that lost. It says Elijah was in the cave. And then there was a great wind. And then there was a great uh, earthquake. But the Lord wasn't in them. See, if you don't deserve right, you will think the Lord is just in the big stuff. It says while he was in the cave, there was a great wind and there was a great fire and there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in them. See, if you don't discern, you will think God is in the obvious. Oh, if you don't discern, you will think God is in the obvious. You'll think God is in the obvious and you will miss God because you just automatically assumed that because he's a big God, he's going to speak through the great wind. Or because he's a big God, he's going to speak through the earthquake. Is that all right? Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. You know, you know, we moved, amen, into a home last year. Bless the Lord. And Elder Hiller can, can let you know, when we were house hunting, bless the Lord. And even though I had my request, some places that I walked in, it was nice, but I said, it's too big. What? It's too big. But this your style. Yeah, but it's too big. It's too big for my family. Oh, you don't get that. What do you mean that's too big for your family? You got six people in your house and a dog. Because in this season of my life, and it wasn't because I couldn't get that too big. But for this season of my life, I can't get nobody in here. Hallelujah. I know what my family need, and I don't want my family to be too spread out. 
You spread out over here. You spread out over there. We spread out. Come on here. Holly. We ain't separate. We in this thing together. I need space, but I don't need that much space because I don't need you in your own world. I don't need you in your own world. I don't need you in your... But the obvious would have been what because you can get that and it looks like that. No, no, no. You got to discern what you need when you need. You went to the car lot and you left with that. You could have got that. I know what I could have got. But I'm telling you what I want to be in this season. I'm telling you where I need to be in this season. It's not that I can't, it's where I choose to be. And so I found what I needed and what was enough. Because, because it's not the obvious. It's not the bigness. It's the flow. It ain't got to be about the size. It's the floor plan. It's what your needs are. You know, you know, <laughs> I know we in church. I'm not saying this, but when I, but when I watch House Hunters, uh, Ursula, they say, no, I don't like it because of the fun shui. Now, I don't believe in all this stuff, but I'm saying, but, but, but what I'm saying is there has to be a flow. It ain't about the space, it's how the space put together. Thank you, thank you. So then I said, so this fits my needs and my desire. But somebody else would have said, oh, the obvious is that. Oh, you, I don't need that. You, you see, you got to know what you need. Wait a minute, you got to know your desire and your need. And stop going overboard just because you, just because you can. And then you'll get in that big house and get lost. You... No, no, no. I need, I need something that's family friendly. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You need nice and functional. Okay. Okay, 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 okay. Oh, that's nice. You should go. I don't know why I'm going here. That's nice. You should go to that store and get that store, and you should get that furniture. That's nice, but I don't want that furniture. Because that ain't, that ain't functional to my needs. It look nice, but we're not that formal. I need something that look good that I can sit in it. I can't get nobody. I don't need nothing you can't eat on. You got a cute table and can't nobody fellowship on it. What is that? We, we want family meals around the table. Can't nobody sit on it. know what works for you and what works for your needs and you got to discern because it may not be the obvious he said while Elijah was in the cave there was a great wind and there was fire but the, well, there was an earthquake but the Lord wasn't in that you know the Lord he was in a still small voice and if you're not discerning, you'll keep looking at the wind and the earthquake and God over here whispering. And you didn't miss the whole move. <laughs> you didn't miss the whole revelation of what God is saying. But where was he? He was in a cave. The Lord showed me that the devil is so afraid of what happens in that secret place of hiding with God. Watch this, that he'll do anything. He'll use anyone any way he can to get you out the secret place. 
Because the enemy can't come in to get to you. He can only try to entice you to come out. Woo! That's why when you feel the enemy pulling on you, yeah, he want to pull you to get you out. Because I can't get you when you're in there, but if you come out, come out of character. Come out of your anointing. I can't get nobody in here. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Come out. Yeah, let me get you out of church. Come on. Let me get you out in the will of God. Come on. Come, come on over here. Come on. Give me Job 28, 7 and 8. I feel like teaching this morning. Job 28. Bless the Lord. That, that there is a path in which no fowl knoweth and which the vultures I have not seen. Come on. Verse 8. The lion's whelp have not trodden it, nor the fierce lion have passed by. See, when you in the secret place of God, there is a place in him that he will hide you. And the enemy said, listen, if I can't come in and get you, I want you to come out. Come out of peace. Come out of character. Come on. Lose your integrity. Get in the flesh. Lean to your own understanding. Please, please get offended. Please get mad. Please get all in your field. I can't come in against you, but if you come out. But if you can, you come out. <laughs> but if you come out, glory to God. See, the greatest threat to the devil and his plans to kill, till, and destroy. Watch the, the greatest threat to the devil's plans to kill, till, and destroy are not, are not the generals, are not the commanders of various branches of the military. It's not the politicians. It's not the amazing pulpit puppeteers. I'll tell you who hell fears and hates and trembles in their prayer. It's cave dwellers. <laughs> It's folk that know how to get in the secret place. Is that all right? It's those who know that the pathway to the secret place of the Most High. It's those that have found a cleft in a rock, a cleft in a rock, and they won't be shaken. That that's who hell fears. Hallelujah. Tell me who's on the Lord's side. That's who hell fears. Glory to God. Hallelujah. It's those who know the pathway to the secret place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you got to learn how to stay in the secret place, folks, and not be shaken. See, and this is what the Lord told me. Things that shake you don't have to break you. Hallelujah. Yes, I may have got tired. Yes, I might have got shook. But just because I took a lick don't mean I got a break. Come on here. Glory to God. And you got to stay. Yes, I may have got offended. Yes, I may have got stabbed in the back. But I'm not going to let that break me. Oh, it shook me for a minute. It stung me for a minute. It surprised me for a minute. I may have bit, but I'm not going to break. The Lord gave me this word, and this is what the Lord says. Come near, come near, come near to me. Enter into the secret place. Enter into the secret place of the Most High. Enter in. Close the door behind you. Close the door to chaos. Close the world to confusion. All your fears, all your anxiety, all your stress. God is calling you to a place of solitude, a place of stillness, a place of quietness, but most important, a place of intimacy. Come to me, come to me, my beloved. Come to me to my secret chamber and I'll visit you. I will cover you. I will protect you. I will pour my love upon you. I will shower you with blessing. Hallelujah. See, what the world needs now is more lovers of God. Yeah. I spoke to you this before. Worshippers must transform into warriors. But I say it again that only worshipers can truly be warriors. Is that all right? Bless. It's intimacy with me. Somebody say Intimacy. Hallelujah, because for, for the secret place of abiding in my presence, there's also a clothing in my power. See, when you abide in his presence, there's also a clothing in the power. And God says time to get back to a greater place of intimacy. Is that all right? Hallelujah. Uh, inter somebody say intimacy. intimacy. I'll bring you to a place. Can I talk? Because in 2 Samuel, 2 Samuel, David was anointed. I told you this before to be king of Israel. And the Bible says when he walked into that third level of the anointing, that king that the Philistines came out against him. The Philistines were notified of David's new anointing, and they came out to challenge him. When David was anointed, his problems didn't go away. The anointing is not a problem exemption power. 
The anointing is not a problem exemption power. The anointing is power to confront power. It's a power to confront problems. Matter of fact, the, the truth is, when David was anointed, his problems got bigger. Okay. When David was anointed with a fresh anointing, when David was anointed with a third level anointing, his problems multiplied. Now, don't let that discourage you. People are like, well, hey, bless the Lord. If my problems got to get worse, then I don't want a greater anointing. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. I don't want to accept my calling because, see, I know what that's going to take. I know what that's going to require. All right. But that's not the way you should look at it. See, see, when the bigger problems come, you anoint it with a bigger anointing to deal with it. I don't want that. No, 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 no. You know, you know, (laughs) hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Yeah, you got bigger problems, but you also have a greater anointing to deal with it. And you can't see it because you're still looking at it from this level. And see, there's a bigger anointing, bless the Lord, but you don't want that because then it's going to require more of you. Then your flesh got to be crucified. And then that's going to be more of a death walk. Is that all right? Hallelujah. Because when you rage war according to the flesh, you lose 100% of the time. A greater, a greater than anointing because the anointing of the Holy Spirit is a supernatural equipment. Somebody say supernatural equipment. The, the anointing is not for shouting, just shouting, dancing, and goosebumps. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm not saying that the anointing is placid and calm and relaxed. On the contrary, I believe the anointing shows up. There will be activity. But I'm saying that the anointing is more than just for emotionalism. The anointing of the Holy Spirit is a supernatural equipment to destroy the works of the devil. Isaiah said it is the yoke-destroying, burden-removing power of God. And it shall come to pass in that day that the burden shall be taken from off their shoulder, the yoke from their neck, and the yoke will be destroyed because of the anointing. Isaiah 10 and 27. I believe that we should expect every time we gather the yokes to be destroyed, bondage to be breaking, bodies to be healed. Is that all right? Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. And we need to move into that place. Somebody say move into that place. But there should be such a hunger and thirst and craving for the glory of God that we will not be satisfied with anything less than the tangible, manifested presence of Jesus. Hallelujah. See, the the, the indisputable truth is, and I'm going somewhere with this, the indisputable disputable truth is you only get what you're willing to reach for. And it follows. If you can live without it, you will live without it. Hunger is the magnet that draws the presence of God. Okay. Hunger is the th- th- thermometer God uses to check the spiritual temperature. Okay. Hunger is a prophecy. Yeah. Teach, Bishop. Hallelujah. They, because they that hunger and thirst, yeah. prophecy, shall be filled. You will be filled in the exact proportion of the intensity of your hunger. Yeah. Since hunger is the rule that God uses to pour out his spirit, you should be asking God to increase hunger and desire. Is that all right? You should keep your devotion life intact. Don't let your emotions overtake your devotion. My devotion is my discipline. It's not what I do when I feel like it. It's not what I do when I'm having a good day. See, emotions will help Hallelujah, you running after things that you can never catch. Devotion to God will stabilize you. Somebody say stabilize you. And when David walked into the third level of the anointing, bless the Lord, when he walked into the third level, he immediately showed up, amen, on the enemy's radar screen, bless the Lord, and showed up as a threat to the devil. See, until you are anointed, you don't really show up on the enemy's radar because you're no threat to hell. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. It's the anointing that makes you dangerous to hell. Some folks, the enemy ain't even worried about. It's the anointing that gives the devil nightmares. It's the anointing. Hallelujah. The the anointing is visible in the spirit realm. Hallelujah. The devil recognizes the anointing because the anointing is the same power that kicked him out of heaven. Everything Jesus did, every miracle, every healing, every deliverance was by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. 
Is that all right? And I believe every believer, every born-again child of God, every blood-washed, spirit-filled, asking, bless the Lord, should be actively seeking, pursuing the anointing. Why? Because we need it. Because we're already fighting on a new level. We're we're fighting. We're we're in a dispensation now. We are fighting higher-level demons, higher-level devils. Come on here. You may not understand it, but the truth is it's different ranks. It's different levels of demons. Is that all right? And we're fighting higher level things today than even in the past. You got to know the dispensation we're in. Is that all right? Me and my wife's right another day. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. And then we were talking about, you know, some stuff we did. I, we, I wouldn't do right now. You ever told somebody, don't try to do what I did. <laughs> we're in a whole different dispensation right now. D- d- look, what I did. It was a whole different time. It was a whole different time. It was a whole different time. Well, mama, you did it. Well, daddy, you don't do what I did. We, we, we in a whole different dispensation. It's a whole new section to what's going on. Some of the stuff you did 10 years ago, you can't even try to repeat that now. So, no. Uh-uh. Things change. But daddy, mama, you got married at 23. Don't do what I did. That was something different. <laughs> that was something. I wouldn't recommend that to you know. <laughs> I had grace and an anointing, but I wouldn't. <laughs> that ain't for everybody. Stop telling folks, you can do it because I did it. That We're in a different dispensation. We got to get rid of this foolish wisdom. This foolish wisdom. Well, you did it, and I, I, and I survived. We're in a whole different, yeah. And tell the truth, and it almost cost you everything. You, you got out of some stuff out of hair, the chinny chin shin. You got, come on here, yeah, and it almost took you out. Yeah, you made it, but Lord, it was a rough road. It was a rough road. It was some drama and trauma. And still trying to fix it. Come on, that's the truth. And you got to tell folk, do you, not me. Look at somebody say, do you, not me. And, and, th- and this nonchalant, this haphazard, half-hearted, bless the Lord. He folks starting churches now. I'd be like, you sure you want to start a church? I tell people, you sure are <laughs> You want to start one? <laughs> you, you sure you got a real call? A real call. <laughs> I'm convinced that, because I'm convinced, and I'm almost done with this, I'm convinced that if you don't learn the secret to living from the secret place, you aren't going to make it. I can't even sugarcoat it. See, Psalm 91 is a covenant of blessings and promises that that, that are only between God and those who live from the secret place. You can't claim Psalm 91 unless you're living in Psalm 91. Boy, listen, this pandemic happened, everybody quoting, I got Psalm 91 over my life. You, you can't claim Psalm 91 unless you live in Psalm 91. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. It's a lot of folk quoting stuff. Okay, okay. Everybody quoting that. Really? See, from the secret place, we become anointed from the Lord. The anointing of the Holy Spirit is a standard operating equipment for the child of God. The anointing is not just a feeling. It's not just a wonderful presence. Is that all right? We're thankful for its presence, but the anointing is different. Is that all right? The anointing, watch this, 
See, we've got to stop reducing stuff to just church. The anointing, Sister Bambi, is for warfare. The anointing is for casting out devils. The anointing is for healing the sick. Delivering the bound that are oppressed. The anointing is for setting the captives free. The anointing is for breakthrough. And when you operate under the anointing, everything you do becomes a part of your warfare against hell. When we come in at, can I teach this? When we come into atmospheres like this under the anointing, what you do under the anointing is a game changer. Under the anointing, your giving is warfare. It's not just normal giving. It's warfare. When you under the anointing, when you sing under the anointing, your singing is warfare. When you under the anointing, when you clap your hands under the anointing, it's warfare. Under the anointing, your worship becomes warfare. Under the anointing, just playing an instrument becomes warfare. The best example, when David played his harp under the anointing, the evil spirits lifted. You got to watch what you do under the anointing. You got to watch what you speak under the anointing. The angels hearken to do the voice of his word. You got to watch while you play under the anointing. I've had things manifest. I ain't even trying to manifest. Somebody said, Bishop, you remember you said that? I'm like, oh, I did say that. I wasn't even serious, but I said it under the anointing. God, 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 because see, God doesn't live in depression or abandonment. He dwells in the praises of his people. Hear me, hear me, hear me, hear me. Are you hearing me? You got to understand the secret. <laughs> and I'm almost done with this. The secret place, watch this. The secret place is not a hideout where we run to get away from the enemy. The secret place is a place of safety for those who dwell there. The secret place is much more than that. The secret place becomes a sacred place, and that sacred place becomes the most desired place. In the secret place, the sacred place, the desired place is where you cultivate a personal and intimate relationship with the Lord. Everybody talking about they in the secret place and you ain't got no intimacy with God. Jesus said, when you enter into thy closet, shut the door. And then, and then when you're in that secret place, pray to the Lord in private. You ain't in the secret place, ain't doing nothing. Come on here. The secret place is a place of intimacy. When you go into the prayer closet, shut the door. And then when the door closed, then pray to your father in what? And then the father which seeth in secret will reward you openly. Stop saying you in a shutdown. You ain't in no shutdown. Come on, stop saying you in a shut-in. You ain't in no shut-in. You in depression. <laughs> Only shut-in I know is calling on the Lord. Only shut-in I know is seeking the Lord. And you let all these, I'm in a shut-in. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, cool. yeah, come on here. No, you ain't, you ain't sabbatical nothing. Sabbatical. Sabbatical is a pause, a rest, a time of seeking the Lord. A time. I'm just still. You ain't still. You just in a place of nothing. You just eh. That's it. No, you trapped. You bound. You locked. Oh, Lord Jesus. See, 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 see. The anointing of your life. Oh, Lord, the anointing of your life is the reward of dwelling in a secret place. The anointing on your life is the reward of dwelling in a secret place. Is that all right? Is that all right? You think you, you know, uh, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, it's, it's just between me and God. And you done lost accountability. 
Can't nobody locate you. Come on here. You done stop giving. You done stop tithing. And I'm just shut in with you. Ain't shut in with the Lord. Because if you shut in with the Lord, you're going to still keep the principles of what he told you to do. If you're in a real shut in, you're going to stay in order. Okay. I don't, I don't, know, I don't know why. You think you have? I'm hiding. Yeah, 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 I'm in a secret place. You're not in a secret place. I'm in a secret place. <laughs> You think, you think, yeah, I'm in a secret place. I'm in a secret place. I'm in a, I got Psalm 91 over my life. I, I, I ain't worried about no corona. I got, child, I got Psalm 91 over my life. No, no, I'm, I'm in a secret place. You're not in a secret place. You think you're in a secret place. Can I cry loud? You're not in a, you know why you're not in a secret place? You're not in a secret place because you in and out. You, you in and out. You, you, in, you in and out. You in and out of church. You in and out the will of God. You in and out of seeking God. See, is that all right? Bless the Lord. You, you say, but you're doing your own thing. And, but but I'm, I'm in Psalm 91. No, no, no. The Bible says, read it again. He that dwelleth. You, come on here. That means you live. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide. See, the abiding cup, when you abide under the shadow, it's because you dwell in a certain place. It's because you live in a certain place. It's because you say, in you I live, in you I move, and in you I have my being. Dwell means to live. It means to stay. It means to stay. It means to, to remain for a time. It means to be a resident of. Is that all right? Only those that dwell can abide under. Uh -huh, that's what it said. I know God going to hear me. No, no. The Bible says, if you abide in me and my word abide in you, then you can ask what you will. And it shall begin. Come on. Next point. Somebody breathe. This is not a part-time walk. That's the point. This is not, this, if you're online, this is not a part-time walk. I said, Lord, what are you saying to me through this? This ain't no part-time. Come on, even the natural. Part-time worker don't get the same full-time benefits. Y'all don't want to talk in here. Part-time worker don't get the same full-time benefits. Contract temporary worker don't get the same. See, 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 folks, we got to stay in this thing. Race is not given to swift or the strong, but to them that can endure to the end. Mother, he said, David said, one thing have I desired of the Lord, and that will I seek after, that I may dwell. That I may what? Dwe that I may what? That I may what? That I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. Stay there and inquire. And because I dwell, here's the benefit. Verse 5 says, because I dwell for in the time of trouble. He shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me upon a rock because he has known my man. That's only a benefit to... Go back to 91. David, David talks about... Oh, Lord, is this helping somebody? Uh, go back. So Psalm 91, David first talks about safety and protection. He that dwells in a secret place of the Most High God shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. That's for secret place dwellers. But then when you get to verse 13, Psalm 91, verse 13, it shifts from safety and protection to authority and power. He starts talking about that you're going to be covered. But then it says, because you dwell there, thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder the young lion, and the dragon, thou shalt trample under your feet. Is that all right? So wait a minute. There's an anointing for protection, and then there's an anointing for demonstration. All that happens for folk who dwell in the secret place. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder and the young lion and the dragon shall thou tread upon your feet. Sound like Luke 10 and 19 to me. Behold, I give you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means harm you. That is the power of the anointing. That's the anointing that can only be found in the secret place. 
See, without the anointing, you're dead in water. Without the anointing of the Holy Ghost, you are an invitation to disasters that are right. The anointing of the Holy Spirit is the key to abundant life. David right? you anoint my head with oil and my cup running over. The, the, hallelujah. But you anoint my head with oil and my cup runs over. Not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. Is that all right? Hallelujah. That's what David said. Give me 2 Samuel. This is my last scripture. Glory to God. 2 Samuel 5 and 17. Hallelujah. Glory to God. 2 Samuel 5 and 17. Hallelujah. Check this out. But when the Philistines heard that they had anointed David, king of Israel, all the Philistines came to seek David. And David heard of it and went down into the stronghold. Another scripture says he went to the hold. They heard he was anointed. Glory to God. They came to get him. David heard it and went to the hole. That word hole means stronghold, fortress, defense. Even when you read David, David inquired the Lord, says, shall I go up against the Philistines? And who will deliver through the hand? And the Lord told him, surely go up. Glory to God. I'll deliver them into your hand. See, the hold is just another place, another name for the secret place. Oh, I heard the enemy up after me. <laughs> you think my first response is to go to war? You don't know me like that. I'm going to the hold. I'm going to the stronghold. I'm going to the secret place where I can be covered and I can get instructions from the Lord. Hallelujah. Where did y'all go? Bless the Lord. What happened to y'all? Did you run? I'm not running. I'll be back. But when I come back, I'm going to know what I'm doing. When I, when I come back, I'm coming back with instructions. When I come back, I'm coming out. I'm thinking about a master plan. When I come back. But right now, I'm going to the hole. Glory to God. Hallelujah. It's a place where you get everything you need. It's a place where you get energized and revitalized. It's a place where you get instruction. It means getting along with God. Hallelujah. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. David knew his success was not just in being anointed. It was his personal fellowship and communion with the Lord himself. Too many believers count too much on themselves. You look for too much validation from people. Listen, here's what the Lord said. You better know where you dwell. And just because you're not highly visible to men, don't mean you don't have a voice in the earth. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Listen, you might not know Lamont Hillard name internationally. Is that all right? <laughs> Glory to God. But that don't mean I don't have a voice. I can't get nobody in here. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You better know where you dwell. And because you dwell in the right place, you got a voice in the earth. Is that all right? You can speak to mountains and they move. You can lay hands on the sick and they... Is that all right? And you don't get upset about that. Rob, Rob Bass said, I'm not internationally known. But I'm known because I get stupid. Take it from me if it's contagious. Because I'm a winner. No, I'm not a loser. To be an MC is what I choose. Ladies love me. Girls adore me. I mean, even the ones who never saw me like the way that my rhymes don't know. The reason why. Let's go, cuz. Wait a minute. Rob Bass was saying... Mother. Rob. Rob Bay said, I may not be internationally known, but I'm known to rock the microphone. I know how to do what I do in my lane and get the job done. See? So you intimidated because you want validation from everybody. I don't need everybody to know me, but if hell knows me, I can't get nobody in here. I don't need everybody. As long as my name is written in the Lamb's book of life, does heaven know me? Does heaven know me? Paul, I know, 
Jesus I know. But who I know? You say you can't receive from people because they not widespread. You're going to miss the move. You're going to miss the move. Is that all right? Bless the Lord. Look at somebody say, you better know where you dwell. This is how I want to receive from cave dwellers. I want to receive from somebody that know what it's like to be in the secret place. And listen, life gets easier when you stop trying to drag people who are only supposed to go with you for a short while. And when they drop off, listen, Ursula, when, you, when they drop off, you got to say, burden down, Lord. Bur burden down, Lord. Burden down. Burden down. Burden down. Burden down. Heavy load, heavy load. I got rid of my heavy load. Burden down. They dropped off. Burden down. Tell the truth. So you got to learn how to pay attention to both words and actions. Just because they played a significant role in the previous season of your life does not mean they're good for you in this season. Burden down, Lord. Burden down, Lord. <laughs> last point. Last point. Last point. Can I get a last point? Stay connected to the source. I see too many, too many people in the church today foolishly leaning on their own selves. In other words, they think they don't need to come to church, don't need to come to Bible study, deceiving themselves, only believing that they're okay. I felt this presence. I feel it. Bless the Lord. I may have spoken tongues six months ago or a year. Bless the Lord. I had a good praise. You know, I had a good praise. About three months ago, I had a real good praise. I'm good. You think you can miss four, four, four times out of five. Don't pay your tithes. Don't, 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 don't think Bible study is necessary. Don't stay serving necessary. And you think you're not seeking God. You're not spending time in his presence loving and worshiping him in the secret place. You're not in a secret place, but you're okay. You lying to yourself. You, ooh, you, you self-deceived. And I believe that's a very dangerous spiritual condition. I believe that, that, that you're not only in danger of backsliding, but you are backsliding. Come on, don't shout me down when I'm preaching good. And you know, and you know, Jamie, what scares me the most is we're living in the darkest, most treacherous, most evil times of our entire lives, and multitudes of church folks act like nothing is happening and carry on like this is usual. That scares me. In the shape of this world, and the church is scared. Don't be distracted, unable to concentrate because our minds are preoccupied. Mindset is everything. If you're a child of God, you need to act like a child of God. Is that all right? And God is calling us and raising us up to do better. See, we love God's grace, but are we mature enough to handle God's truth? Can he hurt your feelings by being honest? To tell us how messed up we are. But you religious though. But you religious. But you got a form of godliness. But deny the power thereof. You choose the craft you participate in. Come on, because the, because the world says this Halloween, and then, and, then, and then, bless the Lord, and then you old foolish Galatians who have bewitched you. And with your deep religious self, got church folk that's so vocal against celebrating Halloween, but visual and supporting witches and warlocks in the church. 
You, you, you want to damn a world for Halloween, but you sit up under Jezebel. I can't get nobody in here. You, you, you come to the house of God and you operate. It's witchcraft right in the pews. But you tolerate that. But you in, and in churches under spirits of control and manipulation. But you tolerate that. But you want to be mad at a kid about dressing up? Okay. Now, I'm not making that right. Don't miss what I'm saying. But, but you got to understand. That's it. But you want to be deceived. 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 You want to, cause you think, cause you think Jezebel just got the lipstick on, and you think Jezebel, you just think, you you just think that you think you got the witch, got the broom and a hat. But let me tell you something, glory to God. The enemy decide, disguises himself. Hallelujah! As a child of light, glory to God. You got to discern in this hour everything that's preaching good, and everything that's looking and sounding good, everything that everybody flocking to. Well, it must be God because it looks so successful. I told you about that obvious. I told you about that obvious. Is that all right? You got to understand the truth. You got to get an understanding of the secret place. Is that all right? Hallelujah. You got to understand. Somebody said understand the secret. Say it again. Understand the secret. You got to get in this thing. Dwell so God can teach you something. See, mistakes is one way of learning. Mistakes is one way to learn. But learning by others' mistakes is a better way to learn. Preach, Bishop! If I ain't got to walk through it, if I can learn from your mistakes, that's a better way of learning. Well, I got to see it for myself. Come on here. Come on here. Here, I'm closing. But if you're not aggressively, passively, if you're not aggressively, passionately pressing forward, the fact is you are passively backsliding. I don't even know if people say backsliding a lot in the church no more. But if you aren't passively pressing forward in the things of God, you are passively backsliding. You may be backsliding and not even know it. And, 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 the, and the devil will get you out there. Oh, he'll get you out there. And he'll isolate, he'll get you out there. And the devil will forget to tell you how much it'll cost you. He'll, he'll, he'll forget that, oh, you can do this and you can do that. And you can come on back. And though you can fall and you can, oh, he, he, he ain't going to tell you how much it'll cost you. He don't tell you you'll lose a piece of yourself. He don't tell you your bounce back ain't going to be like it was before. He ain't going to tell you when you go back out there, it's going to be seven times harder. Seven more days. You're you going to have to fight harder when you get back. Yes, it is. Hallelujah. Look at somebody say the fight back is harder. It is. It, it is. It is harder. It is harder. You ever, you ever been doing good at the gym and fell off? When you win that thing, it was all right. You ever tried to get back? I, I, I'm going to start on Monday. Well, Tuesday. I, I'm going to start on Wednesday. I, I don't feel like it today, Thursday. I'm, I'm going to start next week. <laughs> I'm going to start next well, well, it's the holidays coming now. I'm just going to start in 2022. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> the 
The devil will get you out there and forget to tell you how much it'll cost you. You ever been through something and you say, yeah, I'm back, but I lost a part of me that took something out of me? Bless the Lord. And you got to take the step in the right direction. And sometimes, sometimes when you're taking a step in the right direction, you, you got to do it by faith. Because the flesh ain't going to feel like it. Every step of faith is difficult the first time. Every step of faith is difficult the first time. You, you got to keep on walking. Is that all right? Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. You, when you first trying this thing, walking thing, it, it may be difficult. But that ain't going to lie to you. But faith is like a muscle. The more you use it, the stronger it gets. You got to be strong enough to believe. Is that all right? But that first step. You ever got out there? It was rough. And then you ever crossed over something? And boy, you got to picking up the speed. You got you say, I'm, I'm out here now. <laughs> and, and, and here's my last point. I'm closing. Bless the Lord. You said, well, he preaching a long time. But if I can spend more time in the word, I can spend less time on the altar. Once, thank you. Okay. <laughs> Preachers, pre and, and, and here's the thing. Stay connected to the source because you got to want it for yourself. Because preachers, listen, listen, and this is what the Lord told me. Preachers can pray and fast and desire a move of God, but until the people want it. The preacher is plowing in fallow ground, not fertile ground. When Jesus went to a place and they didn't receive, he didn't. Okay. I came. I was here. I was here to do what I was anointed to do. But you didn't you didn't want to receive because you were too familiar. Because you didn't see the Son of God. You didn't see Jesus the Christ, the anointed one. You saw the carpenter. Anything, it's the, see, anything we decide. David went down to the hole. Somebody said David went down to the hole. David, down to the hole. David knew, wait a minute, I got a, a fresh anointing. Now they coming out at me. He couldn't rest on past victories or accomplishments. Past experience was God, past anointing. David knew he needed a fresh fire to be burned in his life. Listen, folks, you and I, we can't depend on yesterday's move. I don't care how great your past accomplishments were. I don't care, bless the Lord, how much been. I don't care if, if you whoop Philistines before. I don't never want to go into battle and not take God. I don't even know if I got the victory in that same place last time. God, I still need your help to overcome it again. Yeah, I beat it before, bless the Lord, but I need your help to beat it again. You need a fresh fire. So what did David do? Oh, they coming. He went down to the hole. He went down to the stronghold to get a hold of God until God gets a hold of you. Is that all right? And that's what God is trying to lead us. And David came out of the hole with instructions, presence, and power. And the Bible said David smote the Philistines and said, the Lord broke my enemies into pieces before me. Is that all right? And you got to move into that place. For this purpose was the Son of God manifest, that he might destroy the works of the death. We got to get back to the hole. We got to stay in the hole. We, we got to understand the secret place. We got to dwell in the secret place. He's my refuge. The name of the Lord is a what? The righteous run into it, and they are safe. Is that all right? Listen, listen. You, we in this thing too much. You don't want to be quoting something that don't even apply to you. You can't just quote Psalm 91. You got to live in Psalm 91. You got to quote it and live in it. I'm looking at people that God is preserving. I said, I'm looking at people that God is preserving. I'm, I'm looking at people, glory to God, hallelujah, that have come through many of dangerous toils and snare. But the reason you still here, glory to God, even with the struggle, the reason you still here, because I'm struggling in the secret place. <laughs> even though I got affliction, 
I'm struggling in the secret place. Hallelujah. You are my dwelling place. Everything I need is right in your presence. Look at three but say, understand the secret. Come on, understand the secret. 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 Hallelujah. Sometimes you got to tell them, I just want to be where you are. In your dwelling place forever. I don't want to worship from afar. I need to be up close to the fire. I need to be connected to the... I don't want to be distant. I want to be close to the things of God. Is that all right? I want to be close to my leader. What's wrong with it? 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 That's right. Is that all right? What's wrong with it? Why, why, why don't you want the connection? Why don't you want the connection? Why don't you be connected in heart, connected in spirit? Come on here. Come on here. Why don't we thread it together? That's a good thing. That's a good thing. That's a good thing to have backup. That's a good thing to have community. That's a good thing. I don't want to be out here by myself. Too much going on to be out here like that. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You got to stay connected. Father, I thank you for grace this morning. Lord, I thank you that I poured out of my heart and poured out of my spirit. Thank you, Lord, that the entrance of your word brings life and understanding. Thank you, Lord, for what you're doing and how you're manifesting, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that we're getting stronger because we're hearing more. We're hearing, we're hearing revelation. Glory to God. We're hearing right word. Thank you, Lord, that you care enough about us to tell us the truth. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We have this word in our heart that we might not sin against thee, O oh God. Thank you, Lord. You're coming back for a church without spot or wrinkle. Thank you, Lord. There is something that you yet require of us, Lord. And we think that we dwell in the secret place of the Most High God. Thank you that you are a canopy for us, not only us, but for our children and our family, Lord, our church family, Lord. We thank you that we value connection. I thank you, Lord, that as this word went forth today, 